Yo, what's going on, True Blazer fans? It's Tori, and I'm back with another player analysis. Now we're wrapping up this series. This is video 13 of 15, and today we're going to be talking about the Bosnian Beast. Last season was a tale of two seasons for Yusuf Nurkic, as he struggled throughout December, but in January he started reminding us of why we fell in love with the Bosnian Beast when he was traded to Portland in the previous season. Let's compare their stat lines for those two time periods. His points per game stayed even at around 14.5 points per game. His rebounds went up from 7.6 to 10. His assists per game stayed around the same, a little under 2. So you'd think, okay, that's not a lot of improvement, right? But when you look at his field goal percentage, you can see the improvement. His field goal percentage from October through December was 45%, which was very bad. He was shooting a lot of flip shots, shooting a lot of finesse stuff, and Blazer fans were getting pretty sick of what he was doing in games with those types of shots. January through April, though, he almost shot 55% from the field, which was a huge improvement, and it made him a somewhat reliable offensive option. That should be Yusuf Nurkic's goal this season, to shoot 55% because that would mean he's finally an efficient offensive player. And he's shown that he can do it over a 47 game sample size last season, so there's no reason why he couldn't do it for a whole season. He just has to find that consistency. A lot of it is shot selection, a lot of it is going up strong, but hopefully with him being young, this is something that he will continually improve. When you take his January through April stats, and do them per 36 minutes, he averaged over 20 points per game and over 12 rebounds. That's very, very productive on a per minute basis for starting center. And that's just talking about the offensive and rebounding aspects of the game, because his defense is what he's most valuable for when it comes to our trailblazers. And when he came over here in that Mason Plumley trade, our defense was in the bottom 10 defenses in the league. It was absolutely awful. We were continually giving up 30 point first quarters, continually giving up 120 point games and it was just very frustrating as a fan to watch when we replaced mason Plumley with yusuf nurkic our defense turned somewhat respectable and then it came to last season where our defense performed as the sixth or seventh best defense in the entire nba and we're talking about a defense with two guards who while they did improve last season still aren't good defenders at all yusuf nurkic carried that defense his rim protection is very very underrated and it surprised me that he wasn't really getting votes for all defensive team because that just shows how overlooked that aspect of his game is to have that impact on a poor defense and turn it into one of the best in the league only a handful of nba centers would be able to do that as i've said before i like using box plus minus to gauge a player's impact and when you look at yusuf nurkic's box plus minus last year it definitely shows his effect he had a 2.8 defensive box plus minus that's pretty good a lot of the elite rim protectors are in that area as well like al horford rudy gobert and others while he's not the lengthiest rim protector like rudy gobert and he's not the most athletic rim protector like deandre jordan yusuf nurkic just gets it done with smart defensive play and just knowing where to be and when to jump to try and block shots he's also not a guy that really goes out of his way to try and block a shot as he's happy just making what would be an easy layup into a much more difficult one for the opposition. A true rim protector knows when to try and swat the ball out of bounds and knows when they should just try and contest and make the shot as difficult as possible and Yusuf Nurkic seems to have that balance. And that defensive decision making is pretty hard to teach so that he has it at such a young age is promising for his future. Given his size in terms of weight, he is pretty quick off the ground and he does have a decent second jump which allows him to protect the rim as well. He's not the quickest by any means, but his agility is somewhat underrated and it helps him get two spots and be able to jump while on the move. I also think his rim protection helped Dame and CJ improve on the defensive end as well because they know that if they get burnt, they have some help behind them. So they're able to kind of lock in a little bit more and not really worry about getting burnt and able to pressure their defender a little bit more. And you know what? Every now and then they might get beat, but it doesn't kill us like it did in years past. Having Yusuf Nurkic ice the pick and rolls also gives Dame and CJ a little bit more time to deal with the screen, and Dame and CJ struggle at getting through screens when they're guarding the ball handler, but Yusuf Nurkic helps make up for that because he's able to contest those mid-range shots that Stotts is willing to give up, and he doesn't really get beat to the rim while he's playing up on those mid-range shots. This helps neutralize Dame and CJ's weaknesses of getting through screens, Yusuf Nurkic is such an impactful player for our defense 
that I was willing to give him 16, 17 million dollars a year. It surprised me when some Blazer fans were saying I wouldn't give him more than 12 million dollars a year because this is a guy who's still young, still improving, has offensive potential, and his defense is already worthy of a big, big payday. With all that being said, I was glad that we were able to resign him for a four year contract for only 12 million dollars a year after giving those awful contracts to Turner and Myers Leonard. And I think Yusuf Nurkic is going to be a serious bargain going forward with that contract. The last part of this video will be talking about how he can improve his offensive game. Now I do think he has slight potential as a shooter, but I don't really like him shooting mid-range shots, they're not efficient enough. He shoots a lot of very long twos from 16 feet to the three point line. Obviously not as much as some guards, but that's a shot that you see him shooting around once per game. At that point, I'd rather Yusuf just take a step back and shoot a three pointer, because shooting a mid-range jumper at 45% is just as as bad as shooting a three-point jumper at only 30%. So with that being said, I want to see less long twos, and if he's really going to shoot jumpers and Stotts wants him to do that to uh, keep the defense honest, then I hope that he takes a step back and starts launching threes. I don't really want to see him shooting a ton though at all. I want him down on the low post, beasting up on guys. This is the Bosnian beast, so enough with that finesse stuff. That's what Blazer fans were saying all year last year, and I do think he needs to learn how to go up stronger. I'd like to see him benefit himself by using his off arm to maybe ward off shot blockers you know you can't really use it too much or it's an offensive foul but former Blazers center Robin Lopez was very good at using his off arm to shield the ball from getting blocked from shot blockers and he kind of put it up there and he knows that he's going to be able to get a shot off and he doesn't really have to fade away he doesn't have to be too finesse with it he could just go straight up this is something i'd like to see yusuf nurkic learn how to do as he does have a decent hook shot it's just he misses a lot when he has to fade away he does have a nice floater i have no problem with that shot it's a pretty good shot for a center and he's able to short roll and doesn't really have to get all the way to the rim in order to score he can pull that floater from 10 to 12 feet but on the pick and roll i would like to see him use a jump stop more you know maybe a little hop step into a pump fake this is something i've seen flashes of him doing but i want to see him kind of get under control and kind of use his footwork and use pump fakes to get defenders out of position off balance and if a defender's off balance and Yusuf Nurkic just goes to their chest they're not gonna block anything. I think Yusuf is slightly too predictable in his offensive game and the shots he's going to take, especially when he's on the pick and roll. He is able to kind of readjust and hold the ball at different angles to avoid shot blockers, but I would like to see him maybe pump fake a little here and there, maybe make one guy jump so that makes somebody else help and then he can pass out of it. I don't know. I just wanna see him play a little bit slower, be a little bit more methodical because he does have decent footwork, use a little bit more pump fakes, and then just go up strong. I think that's the foundation he needs for his offensive game, and I think that'll make him effective and shoot the 55% field goal percentage that we need him to shoot this year in order to be efficient. I do want to see his passing make a little bit of a return. While he does make some risky passes, when he came over in that Plumlee trade for the rest of the 20 games that season, he was throwing dimes. He made Maurice Harkless look like an all-star. Okay, maybe not quite like an all-star, but he and Maurice Harkless had a connection that was very fun to watch. Maurice Harkless is a very good cutter, and when you had Yusuf Nurkic working in the high post like Mason Plumley did, he was pretty effective at finding cutters, finding shooters, and I do think we need more ball movement, I do think we need more player movement, and I think that can start with Yusuf Nurkic having the ball in the high post a little bit more looking to make plays. With all that being said, I do hope that he's able to finally put together a full season that we expect from him. 15 points per game, 10 rebounds, and 55% field goal shooting to go along with his elite defense. That'd be a very, very good center, and that could propel us into another third seed anyway true blazer fans let me know what you guys think about yusuf nurkic let me know if i missed on anything on his game that i should have talked about and let me know what your opinions are on the bosnian beast saturday i will have a day after recap for that game i will be doing that the day after every game so you guys want to stay tuned for that anyway this has been tori i hope you guys have an amazing weekend ahead peace out go blazers